Hello everyone, my name is Katya. I'm an incoming PhD student at Harvard in the Applied Math program. I have recently graduated from Princeton University and while I was a student there, I interned at Apple. In this video, I'm going to share my experience of what it's like to intern at Apple. I'm going to talk about my salary and benefits as well as how to prepare for internship interviews, how to search for internships. I will also give advice to high school students who want to get involved with Apple. I interned in the advanced computation group at Apple during the summer of 2022 when I was a rising senior in college. I was closely working with my program manager as well as my iBuddy, which is another machine learning engineer in the team, and I really enjoyed my time there working. At the end of the summer, I presented my work to the vice president of camera and photos division at Apple. It was quite fun. I was offered to return full time and I decided to pursue graduate school instead. So I got paid $41 per hour and I also received a relocation allowance which means that they paid for my flights and they gave me a stipend for relocation. I also had a free housing. I lived in a very nice studio in a very nice housing complex. How I got my internship? I reached out to a director of design at Apple who at some point gave a talk at Princeton about his work. I really enjoyed his talk and we had some common interests so I just reached out to him with the one project that I was working on and I asked whether he knew of any Apple teams that were working on similar projects and he actually knew a team that was doing something that I was interested in so he connected me with a recruiter. She quickly set up an interview with my program manager in a couple of days. I had five interviews in total. Two were with my program manager and three were with uh, people on the team and they were technical. So the technical interviews, they tested my math knowledge, my Python programming skills, and my machine learning knowledge. So for the math interview, I got asked a bunch of questions from linear algebra, analysis, and probability theory. It was a very long interview because there were like some very difficult problems that took me a while to solve. One piece of advice that I would give is that you should show your thinking while you answer your interview questions. Even if you don't know the right answer, you can still explain the way you think. I got questions like, oh, what is a vector space? Like an abstract definition of vector space and then some questions from analysis if some series converge or don't. And then I got asked some probability question that I don't remember at this point. I was asked about dot product and stuff like that. Another technical interview was on machine learning and I got asked basic questions about machine learning, different models, k-means clustering. I was able to answer most questions in that interview, like 90% or 95% maybe. And they were very surprised because I was an undergrad at that time and the questions were designed for PhD students because my team usually accept PhD students as interns. I was the first undergrad. The last technical interview was about Python and I basically had to code some functions, some classes and explain basically what I'm doing. At the very end of the interview, the, the guy asked me about my favorite Python libraries, but also about the things that I find most annoying about using Python. So basically we started discussing NumPy arrays and how you can, like, you need to put like these brackets when you define the array. In my non-technical interviews, we mostly discussed my research interests, what projects I worked on in the past, what kind of work the team was doing, even though they weren't able to tell me precisely what they're working on because there is a bunch of non-disclosure agreements, they still pointed out the general area in which they work and I found it extremely interesting. So I had a very good research fit with the team and also I, I think I had like a good culture fit in terms of the values that we believe in. So I think I just got very lucky and I got connected with the right team and I was offered the internship soon after I passed all of my interviews. Okay, let's continue. I am now in Lewis Library at Princeton. Now I'm going to talk about what I liked about my internship. First of all, I really like the culture at Apple and specifically in my team. So usually people say that your experience at Apple depends heavily on your team and everything is team dependent, team specific. So in my team in particular, I really like the culture. Uh, my program manager puts a lot of effort into creating a very respectful, safe and welcoming environment and I really like that. And during 
during our weekly meetings, we sometimes discussed things uh, relevant for personal growth or career growth as opposed to just focusing on the work and tasks at hand. And I really like that. I also like the high standards that people have for your work at Apple. So if you work there, it is generally considered that you're pretty smart and you do high quality work. And I really enjoyed this environment. Second, I really liked the project that I was working on. It was research-based, so I did a lot of research and coding, and I really learned the whole process and structure of how you approach a software engineering project. For example, I learned about project architecture. The first time when my program manager asked me to explain the architecture of my code, I was like, oh, I'm going to use convolutional neural network architecture, blah, blah, blah. But what they meant by architecture is like how your code is structured, what kind of classes you use, what kind of functions you use, and before you write the code you basically create an outline first you create an outline in a document like in a separate document maybe you can use the python script but just outline everything that you will need to build your model maybe you need a class to define your loss function another class to define the training process another class to define evaluation of your model stuff like that and you do this before actually coding everything and i thought it is extremely useful and good lesson because it allows you to really easily write your code once you know what you're doing <laughs> when i started my internship i felt like i need to start coding right away but i actually spent almost two months doing research i still did some coding and testing of other models but for my new model i was doing research for two months and then coding at the very end so i really gained a new perspective of how to do research well and i learned some very good coding practices it was my first time doing a software engineering internship it was my first time submitting pull requests and basically have other people review my code and comment on my code and i had to write very clear code with all of the descriptions and explanations of what each function does it was a good experience and i learned a lot next thing that I liked about my internship is my program manager and the people that I worked with. So my program manager was extremely nice. He emphasized work-life balance a lot. And for me, as someone who is not very good at work-life balance, it was interesting to see this kind of perspective of someone who worked at Apple for over five or six years. He basically emphasized that there are many other things to life outside of work. And work is just one of the things that you do in life. I also like the office where I was working. It was brand new although it was kind of empty most of the time because it was 2022 and most people still worked from home uh, most of the week so it was pretty empty but the office was beautiful and there were some snacks it was very good i also liked the studio in which i lived the housing that apple provided it was amazing it was the first time i lived by myself in an apartment there was also an amazing gym and a sauna and a pool in the housing complex where i lived and i really liked all of the perks that I received as an intern so there were like a bunch of discounts at different stores like adidas and also at apple there are a lot of internal courses and online classes that you can take it was also extremely interesting i learned a little bit about video editing and photography and they also have some free subscriptions that you can use for example you can get a free subscription to final cut pro how to find an internship as i said in my case i reached out to an apple employee in they connected me to the right team. My advice is that you should try to develop connections with people from the company where you want to intern and try to give them some value or be helpful in some way. Don't try to network with people just for the purposes of getting a job because people don't like being used. If you can bring some value, if you can show that you have an interesting background, if you can contribute substantially to their work, then that's what's valued. That's what's gonna lend you an offer. I would recommend reaching out to specific people or recruiters as opposed to sending your resume on the official website because you'll never hear back if you just send your resume on the official website because they get thousands and thousands and thousands of resumes. Your chances of hearing back are very low if you just submit your resume and that's it on the official website. So I encourage you to reach out to specific people, attend events where you might meet those kinds of people and uh, yeah, just show your work. If you can get noticed, if you can publish your work and prove that you bring some value to the table, then I think you'll have a much easier time getting an internship.
Now let me share some advice about how to apply for internships and how to interview. First of all, you should be ready to talk about your projects. Whatever you put on your resume, you should be able to talk about that. You should be able to talk and explain your project not only from the technical side, but also explain the motivation and the big picture. If you can explain the bigger picture, like why your research matters, why your project matters, why you were working on the project, how it shaped you, how it informed your current research interest, that all matters. In addition to being able to talk about the project, my advice is try to demo your project. So in my case, I was able to show a couple of demonstrations of what I was working on and I think that was pretty convincing as opposed to just talking about something uh, without showing it. Showing is always much better than just telling and explaining. So if you can do a demo, always do it. So this is mostly for non-technical interview questions where you have to talk about your previous experience. You should practice how you talk about your project and you should be able to answer these questions very clearly. For the technical questions, I would say that you should have a general understanding of the field in which you are going to intern. And when they ask you questions, you should be able to explain your thought process. Even though some questions might be very difficult and you might feel stuck or you don't know the answer, don't just sit silently saying nothing. Just try to say your thoughts out loud. The people who interview you, usually they don't want you to fail. So if you start explaining your thought process, they might be able to give you some hints or guide you. You can eventually reach the right conclusion. Make sure that you can explain maybe what you learned relevant in class, in school, even though you're not able to answer the question correctly, but you still show that you have some knowledge in that area. What you bring to the table is actually your new ideas concepts perspectives and when they ask you questions or ask you to solve some problem during the interview don't just give up if you don't know the answer try to persist try to think try to find different solutions but don't just give up and say oh i don't know let's move on because i think people like to see that you can persist through challenges so how to best prepare for your interviews it's very difficult to prepare for interviews because you don't really know what kind of questions you're going to get asked but you should just know the basics of your field. You should know the basics. If you're doing machine learning internship, you should know the basics of math. You should know the basics of machine learning, linear algebra analysis, probability, all this stuff. And I think you should also have a good idea about what's happening in your field right now. Like what are the current research areas, what the people are most interested in, what are the latest tools, technologies, concepts that people came up with. So I got a question about how to get involved with Apple as a high school student. One way you can get involved is by participating in the Swift Student Challenge. And there you have to show your passion for coding by submitting an incredible app playground on the topic of your choice. And you basically get some swag and some cool stuff. And you can even be selected to attend WWDC at Apple Park. WWDC is the annual conference that Apple holds where they showcase their new technologies that they developed over the past year. And you can apply from anywhere in the world if you're over 13. There are some additional minor requirements, but pretty much if you're a high school student, you can participate. When you visit Apple Park at WWGC, sometimes you have the opportunity to present your work to Apple senior people, so it can be fun. And when I was interning at Apple on the day of WWDC, all of my co-workers, they got together in the common room and um, turned on the TV to watch WWGC together. It was quite fun. <laughs> So in conclusion, I enjoyed my time at Apple. It was a good opportunity for me to learn what it's like to work at a big tech company. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer. And I will see you very soon.